All right, I gotta interrupt it real quick and I uh, take about five minute break and now it's raining out. So if you hear uh, rain on the top of the greenhouse, that's why. Up. She's got some yucky on her. She's been quarantined, but now she's in with the adults. Yeah, she's doing good. Yeah, and I she's gotten a lot friendlier since she's been out here. Yeah. Remember how crazy she was inside the house? Didn't want to do with us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's she, actually. She was just rubbing. Yeah. And now she's doing really good, I guess, because of the habitat. Yeah, she eats like a horse. Um, she has a lot more space to roam. Yeah. In the meantime, that's happening. He's a voyeur. It's great. Let me touch on lighting. You'll see uh, these drop lights up here. It's what I use for lighting uh, because I just I don't have a solution right now. Uh, well, I have a solution in my head. I just never have. I just never installed it. So uh, I do need to get a better better lighting out here at night when I'm out here. Uh, but they 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 do the job. I have a bunch of these sliders. Uh, they, they're rescues from people that didn't want them. They're young. They're only a couple years old. Uh, people that get these, um, you know, don't realize the care and, and, and stuff. And uh, they're, they're amazing little animals. They're, they're really cool. They're beautiful. It's a shame they have the reputation they do. And it's a shame that people just dump them. Um, and, uh, you know, so I love them. They're great. Whether or not I'll keep them long term, um, we'll see. My kids love them. So there's that. Uh, there's five in here that are all basically the same size. Uh, supposedly they're, they're hit albino, but you know, to be honest with you, I don't know if I'll, I'll ever breed them um, because there's just too many of them out there and the whole albino blindness thing kind of bothers me in a way. So there's five sliders in here uh, and there's three Reeves turtles. There's one of them. And the Reese Turtles are awesome. Uh, I love these guys. They're just, they're small. Um, they're manageable. They're great. They're, they're easy. Um, I've never bred Reese Turtles before. Uh, I do have one male and two females. And I'm not sure. The male I raised uh, from a hatchling, the two females, uh, I got at uh, roughly this size, maybe a little smaller. So I'm not as sure what their ages are. But, um, you know, if they breed one day, great. If not, that's cool too. But, uh, I'm never going to bring these guys. These are awesome. Love them. Uh, they're just cool little animals. So these are all smaller turtles, either small reese turtles like this um, or uh, small red ear sliders. So this size is obviously definitely not suitable for uh, for them for the, for the rest of their lives. Although the, the FX4, for the amount of water that's in there, it's, it's providing uh, basically over filtration. Uh, which is good, especially for turtles, because you know they, they do tend to mess things up. Um, and then I do do the water changes in this, so it's relatively clean. And some pond plants. These actually went dormant during the uh, the winter, and they're just coming back uh, over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, these turtles, awesome. I also have Arlo cameras pretty much everywhere. There's an animal, so this covers the red foots. That covers the, uh, the Reeves turtles back there. Uh, we have one under there for the Hermes, one there for the Greeks, and uh, another one over there for the Greeks that you can't see right now. It's actually being charged. These Arlos are great because I, I've uh, had situations where, you know, I either have a turtle or a tortoise on its back, um, or uh, I've caught them laying eggs when I wouldn't normally catch them and I might have missed the eggs. So uh, the Arlos are great. I've never had a security issue, thank God. But if I did have anybody coming in here that shouldn't be in here, uh, the, the alert will come up on my phone and uh, I'd be notified right away and I'd just run out of the house and take care of it. And he's still going on. And then in terms of temperature monitoring, I have this sensor here that stays right around where the red foots are. It's cool right now because um, it's not sunny and it's raining out. So. It's probably, I think it's about 63 or 64 outside, 
but we got 76 right, right in this spot right here and 83% humidity. Down here, where the Hermans are, we have these. So we got 75 uh, humidity and 75 temperature. And these, all these little um, sensors come in handy, especially in the winter time when you know you're most worried about temperatures. Although this time of year when it's sunny out, uh, it it gets really hot in here, so you got to worry about that too. Too much heat. So right over here in the green enclosure, we have 74 degrees and 65 percent humidity. So. I got them everywhere. Uh, in the winter time, if I would have shown you, uh, you would see a big temperature fluctuation um, uh, due to the microclimates. But this time of year, it stays relatively consistent. Unless it's a hot, sunny day, it still stays relatively cool comparatively uh, down on the ground as opposed to up here. So it could be literally 100 degrees uh, ambient around here, which at that point I have to open some more doors and, and cool it down a little bit. So it could be 100 degrees there, but then I'll still stay, you know, 80, 85 down there, which is perfect for them. So one thing that um, some folks have asked me is, why do I have this greenhouse? You know, why, why can't I just have a building? Wouldn't it be easier to heat? And, and it would be, but, you know, I, I started out with a greenhouse, like I said earlier, uh, with plants. And the plants just do great in here, even when it's cool in the wintertime. Um, and uh, so it's perfect for them. So I had it for the plants anyway, and the, the tortoises and turtles kind of rounded it out and uh, became residents as well, and, and I kind of tweaked it over time. So if, if you're thinking of doing something like this, um, my best advice to you is what, what's your goal? If your goal is just to raise healthy tortoises, it might be cheaper in the long run for you to um, do a, a building or, a, or an insulated shed or or a garage or even a room in your house if you can if you can get away with that. You can do the proper lighting and, and conditions. You can create all that stuff in an enclosed area in a more insulated area with consistent temps. Um, better than you can probably do in a greenhouse. But uh, the one benefit that I said earlier to the greenhouse in terms of the tourists and the turtles is that they light cycle, day night cycle. Um, really, I think it just really helps them. I, I really think that they, they benefit from it a lot. Over here, this is my potting bench. It's also my work table, so you see all my bonsai tools. Uh, so this is where I do all my, my messing with plants. Uh, this here just comes off, and under there is a cement mixing tub uh, that I can remove and empty all the old soil out. So when I want to go repot something, I just take this off and, and do, do my thing. Up on this pole here, uh, this is uh, actually a bunch of succulents in Hoya that are planted in this in this. Uh, Pot that sits on top of a pole. I have a pole outside that's about 10, 12 feet up that sits uh, up on top of that in the warmer months. And I just bring it in here um, in the um, winter. I have some orchids. These are Vanda orchids. For some reason, my Vandas are not doing all that great this year. Uh, you can see the brown spots. Um, I think it might have gotten a little too cool for them, um, but. You know, uh, everybody that knows me knows I don't really care about the flowers too much, to be perfectly honest with you. I just think those roots are awesome and how they just kind of go down and, and, and everything. There's no soil in there. Um, you don't need them for anybody that's familiar with orchids. You don't need the soil so much as long as you have the conditions for them. Uh, but I keep the Spanish moss around the roots uh, to help uh, keep them just a little bit of humidity on the roots. Uh, and then obviously it's, it's above the turtle tank, which helps with humidity as well. And for my turtle tank, what I'd like to do one day is they sell, I think they're 300 gallon stock tanks that are about the same height, but they're, they're much bigger. So my bob filter setup over there sits on top of cinder blocks, which you can barely see uh, right there. So that sits on top of cinder blocks. What I could do is get rid of the cinder blocks, uh, put in a bigger turtle tub and let it stretch underneath the bob filter so the bob filter kind of sits on half of it um, so you have a dark area for the turtles and then they can come out here to get fed and have the lighter area and get up on the, on the, on the land area if they wanted to. Um, so I'm thinking about getting rid of this one day. Uh, this is probably two or three years down the road. I've got other stuff I want to take care of. But anyway, what I could do is, is just put a bigger stock tank here to uh, house the turtles better. But I mean, now this is doing exactly what we need to do. These turtles are healthy. 
I'll show you this one. This is a big cooter. Look at a heavy cooter. Um, they're healthy. They're doing their thing. And, uh, yeah. Cooters are cool. Another thing that might be coming sooner rather than later, it all depends. Um, so my red foot enclosure is about, I think it's about uh, five by eight. And I have three adult females, one adult male and two um, sub-adults. So that's a sub-adult over there. That's an adult female. That's an adult female. And that's an adult, adult female. Um, I might, so this, I mean, they're, they're doing good. They're fine. But it's, like I said earlier, it's a, it's a glorified tortoise table. And there's nothing wrong with tortoise tables. Um, but it's 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 a box with a bunch of uh, molten substrate in it. I'm really conflicted. I'd, I'd rather do something a little bit more interesting. And if I can't do anything more interesting for them, um, at least bigger. So what I might do is I have my potting bench here. I might extend that out to here. I give them another two feet by by five feet, roughly, give or take. Um, and then uh, this would be their new hide, and then this whole area would be open. Um, and then I can just kind of bring the potting bench back to here. Uh, so I might do that just to give them a little bit more space. One thing that I, I am always reluctant to do, and there's no reason for it, because plenty of people do it uh, perfectly fine, and it's probably a better way of doing it. I'm, I'm always paranoid of brumation, right? So my Greek tortoises back here, these guys brumate it all in that box. And anybody that follows me on Instagram uh, probably saw a few posts on my Greek tortoises brumating. So they, they live in there all winter. They stay asleep for months and it does great. And, th and this past year was the first year that I let them brumate entirely and, and didn't worry about it. A lot of folks use cold frames outside and if in my area and in the Northern States, in some states, you can get away with it where you can roommate them outdoors all year round on a cold frame. So, I, you know, every time I have the opportunity, I ask people that do it, you know, how do you do it? What do you do it? And I'm probably asking the same question just because I'm trying to get past my own paranoia. But um, I'm considering this year to build cold frames in their outdoor enclosures, which are on the other side of that wall, um, and roommating them outdoors uh, all year round. I know me, I would probably want to be on top of them uh, three or four times a day with a temp gun just to make sure that they're okay in those cold frames. Um, but uh, what I could do is then my hatchlings and juveniles, I might be able to keep out here in the greenhouse uh, until they're old enough to stay in those cold frames. So it's something that I'm thinking about. It's something I probably should do. Um, I think it's probably better for the tortoises. And, it, and it's totally me and my paranoia and not being... Um, you know, not just just not doing it. So we will see. Another question I get is why don't I brumate my turtles in my outdoor pond? When we moved here, there was there was a pond already here, uh, but it's it's nice, I guess. But it's not the perfect pond. But I mean, it holds water. Uh, the water's clean. I filter it. You know, all that stuff. Do all the stuff that you, that, that you have to to do to make sure you have a good pond. But it's not deep at all, and it's not big at all. In my old house, I had a nice big pond. It was about 20 by 10 feet, four to five feet deep in the middle. Um, and there was no problems with uh, brooming my turtles outside there because uh, even though the, in some of our, the worst of our winters, the ice would freeze relatively thick, uh, it would never freeze to the bottom. The pond that I have now is only about a foot and a half to two feet deep. And I'm just not that all, all that comfortable with it. So I bring, I've been bringing these guys in here to, um, to to live out the winter in here. Uh, probably don't have to. Again, it's my own paranoia. Uh, although I did roommate my snapper uh, out there this year, and he did perfectly fine. He came back and he's eating and looks great and, and uh, did well. He actually roommated on land, which uh, he had never done before. In terms of again, in terms of future plans, that pond that I have outside, uh, I have a whole big plans for that. I might make, I'm going to make that a lot bigger, maybe with a stream uh, and all that stuff. And then these guys can live out there year round.